One of the barriers to getting fresh food to urban consumers has been the distance it has to travel to get to them. But indoor farming offers a solution to that, where food is grown in urban areas. Produce doesn't have to travel long distances and can be delivered sometimes in 24 hours. That means the consumer gets to enjoy the nutrients and flavor. And there are other benefits. The taste, you can manipulate the taste and change based on the growing techniques. Another benefit is the longer shelf life food grown locally can provide the consumer. Food like the lettuce, root vegetables, and microgreens grown at Area 2 farms in Arlington. That's another advantage of indoor farming. It can be done in densely populated parts of the state as well as in rural areas. The advantages of indoor farming is that you're able to grow so much food in such a compact space. But Area 2 Farms is taking things a step further by moving the plants throughout the day. So the bottom two layers of the farm are not lit and the rest of the farm is lit. What that does is the bottom two layers are where the plants are sleeping. Once they come up onto that third layer, they'll get watered. So they'll get their breakfast for the day and they'll go through the rest of the system. Um, and we have lift gates that will drop the plants back down and put them into their nighttime. So we're replicating a plant's day cycle just by moving the plants versus mass heating or mass cooling or mass lighting farms, um, which is what typical indoor farms will do. Area 2 is also operating on the Community Supported Agriculture Model, or CSA. That means they grow the food on the premises and customers can subscribe to their service and order specific items from a menu of offerings. Area 2 has hundreds of subscribers each week, illustrating the demand for fresh food in urban areas. We have the ability to give it to our community, to our families, you know, within 24 hours of it being harvested. So that allows these families to get things on their tables that they would have never seen in the shelves of these stores. Because of its practical benefits, state and local governments have taken steps to make it easier to get an indoor farming operation off the ground. Now in Virginia, if you want to build a, an indoor farm, um, all of the growing equipment, the, the glass exterior is all um, exempt from sales and use tax at purchase, which is going to be a pretty big deal. We've also passed legislation that classifies this as farm equipment. So many localities don't tax farm equipment, but it wasn't officially classified as farm equipment before. So last year, legislation passed that uh, deems all indoor growing equipment as farming. And so the localities that choose to exempt that from their tax roles, they'll, now they can, can do that. Virginia's invested heavily in research through the Institute of Advanced Learning and Research in Danville uh, through their controlled environment, um, CEA Innovation Center, led by Dr. Scott Lohman, where they can do research that benefits the whole state of Virginia, or they can do contract research for particular companies. In addition to tax incentives, some local governments are taking steps to ensure indoor farming businesses aren't at odds with zoning ordinances. Area 2 is looking to expand. At the time that they came to us, we didn't really have anything in our zoning ordinance as far as business uses that kind of fit the model of what they're providing the community. And so what the city did was move pretty quickly um, to try to institute some zoning text amendments to provide um, an avenue for businesses like that to be, to be able to operate within the city without needing any type of special approval from council or going to a public hearing or anything like that. With a changing environment and a demand for fresh produce, indoor farming is a good bet for those looking into the future of agriculture. For Real Virginia, I'm Burke Muller reporting.